I'm Michelle McVicker, the Collections and Education Assistant at the Museum at FIT. This video aims to provide a brief overview of fashion from the 1960s to the 1990s, highlighting over 25 objects from the museum's collection. I will illustrate the themes and designers of different decades using images of objects from the museum's collection. Learning about fashions of the past allows us to appreciate the diversity of choices and freedoms in the way we dress today. An understanding of fashion history also provides creative inspiration for the present. Fashion is an important form of self-expression and one of the most accessible forms of visual culture. The museum at FIT collects, conserves, documents, exhibits, and interprets fashion. It houses more than 50,000 garments and accessories from the 18th century to the present. Hemlines began to rise during the early 1960s, and they continued to rise as the decade progressed. Styles that landed well above the knee became known as miniskirts, and they remain an emblem of 1960s youth culture. British designer Mary Quant was a pioneer of the miniskirt trend. She drew inspiration from the short skirts and flat shoes worn by tap dancers. By 1966, the miniskirt had reached the United States, and the New York Times declared it to be the most important British import since the Beatles. While the trend-driven youth quake culture thrived in London, French couturier André Courage used the future as a metaphor for youth. Like Quant, Courage was a strong proponent of the miniskirt, and he designed some of the shortest skirts in Paris. In 1964, he introduced his Space Age collections, which established his reputation as one of the most forward-thinking couturiers. Courage's clothing was streamlined, relying on details of construction rather than adornment. His silhouettes were starkly geometric, and they were sometimes emphasized by his choice of striped or checked fabrics in heavy materials that held their shape. The garments were worn with futuristic accessories, such as white leather boots, helmet-like hats, and white sunglasses. The influence of space travel on the designer was clearest in Courage's boots, which were fastened up the center back with Velcro, a material newly developed by NASA to anchor items inside spaceships. Paco Rabanne gained notoriety for his 1966 collection entitled 12 Unwearable Dresses in Contemporary Materials. He replaced fabric, needle, and thread with plastic discs, wire, and pliers. Rabanne's avant-garde experimental creations came to symbolize the future forward ideals of 1960s fashion. The fashionable body became increasingly young and thin during the 1960s and 70s, an appearance that was exemplified by fashion models. Designers began making clothes that were more body revealing, often eliminating the use of foundation garments. Rudy Gernreich aimed to liberate women's bodies with his provocative designs for lingerie. His unstructured no bra, introduced in 1965, capitalized on the trend for a braless look and on the popularity of transparent fabrics. Available in various shades of nylon, it was intended to blend in with the wearer's skin. The hippie style developed during the late 1960s. It was initially an anti-fashion aesthetic developed in reaction to mass-produced goods and capitalism. It promoted handcraft, repurposed clothing, and natural materials, and often drew inspiration from folk art and the dress of indigenous peoples of the United States. Giorgio di Sant'Angelo adapted the hippie aesthetic, which sometimes included worn antique clothing, into high fashion. Many of his designs were intentionally distressed and assembled in ways that highlighted their craftsmanship. This skirt is fashioned from irregular patches of bleach suede that are visibly whip-stitched together. There was a boom in commercial air travel during the 1960s that enabled fashion photographers, editors, and socialites to visit far-off locations. The jet-set lifestyle also inspired a trend for exotic wardrobes. 
Designer Oscar de la Renta drew inspiration from non-Western fashions when he created this vibrant, bejeweled caftan worn by Diana Vreeland, who was then working as the editor-in-chief of Vogue magazine. Shoes with small platforms began to appear in fashion magazines as early as 1967. Terry de Havilland was the son of a London cobbler, and he began to make platform styles from the 1940s prototypes he found in his father's workshop. De Havilland quickly gained recognition for his sense of playfulness and eye for color. He went on to make shoes for stars such as David Bowie and Cher. The acceptance of pants for women was one of the most significant fashion developments of the 20th century. Yves Saint Laurent was an early and important proponent of women in trousers. The 1966 debut of his Le Smoking style, which was based on a man's tuxedo, epitomized the woman who was modern, chic, and daring. Saint Laurent continued to experiment with different menswear styles for women, adapting the appearance of the pinstripe gangster suit, safari jacket, and utilitarian jumpsuit. By the end of the century, women were freely wearing trousers for both casual and formal occasions. African-American designer and FIT graduate Stephen Burroughs is celebrated for his vivid use of color. Influenced by music and dance, his clothes were soft, comfortable, and chic. This dress was featured in the 1973 Battle of Versailles fashion show, a spectacle that pitted American and French designers against one another. Burroughs' curling lettuce hem was initially created by mistake when his assistant overstretched a fabric while sewing it. The designer turned it into a signature element of his work. American designer Halston was an advocate of a sleek, minimalistic style during the 1970s. He developed garments that relied on highly sophisticated and unique construction methods, and he eliminated buttons, zippers, and other closures. One of Halston's most celebrated creations is his sarong tied dresses, made from a single piece of silk fabric. It was meticulously sewn along one spiraled seam to create a body skimming silhouette. The only closure is a fabric tie at the center front. Denim, a fabric closely associated with work and leisure wear, was appearing in the work of esteemed fashion designers by the early 1970s. European companies such as Fiorucci helped to launch a craze for tight, high-waisted jeans, and American designer Calvin Klein introduced his line of designer jeans in 1978. Klein's jeans were based on the European style that dominated the denim market at the time. They featured a distinctive stitch pattern on the back pockets and a Calvin Klein label that branded the jeans as a status symbol. The Japanese fashion revolution of the 1980s marked an important turning point. At the beginning of the decade, avant-garde Japanese designers Issey Miyake, Yoji Yamamoto, and Rei Kabukuro of Comme des Garçons introduced radically new concepts of fashion to Paris. Combining innovative textile technologies with aspects of traditional Japanese dress, these designers were instrumental in creating a changed relationship between body and clothes, a new attitude toward the beauty of imperfection, and an appreciation of avant-garde fashion as an art form. The growing presence of women in the workplace by the 1980s coincided with the creation of women's power suits. Business women sought to dress in a manner that was both authoritative and feminine, but not overtly sexual. John T. Malloy, author of the Dress for Success Guides, advised professional women never to mimic menswear, but to wear a business uniform of skirt suit and blouse. Donna Karen presented her first collection in 1985. She introduced the concept of seven easy pieces, a wardrobe of interchangeable garments that could be worn in various combinations. The designer's mix-and-match approach to dressing stood in stark contrast to the broad-shouldered power suits. She continued to make clothing that was chic and versatile, such as this dress that could be easily accessorized to suit various occasions. Nike's Air Jordan 1 basketball sneakers 
named for Chicago Bulls star Michael Jordan, were introduced in 1985. Sales of the shoe in its first year amounted to a staggering $100 million. At a 2020 auction, a pair worn and signed by Jordan sold for an unprecedented $560,000. It was the highest amount ever fetched for a pair of sneakers and exemplifies the sneaker craze that Nike helped to establish. Although African American designers have set many fashion trends, historically they have been underrepresented in the fashion industry. Patrick Kelly was the first American to become a member of the Champs Syndicale, the governing body of French couture. Kelly's designs drew inspiration from his southern roots. The colorful buttons on his knit dress referenced the mismatched buttons his grandmother used to mend his family's clothing. Christian Lacroix heralded a return to luxury that helped to define the excesses of 1980s fashion. This evening dress demonstrates a trend for overt opulence that reached its peak during the latter half of the decade. Lacroix's playful dresses became recognizable status items for women who wanted to flaunt their wealth and good taste. The 1990s was defined in part by Logomania. Companies such as Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Moschino, and Versace conspicuously branded their garments, transforming them into status symbols of luxury consumerism. Karl Lagerfeld reinvented Chanel's classic tweed suit with each of his collections for the label. In this ensemble, he paired the suit with a matching waist cincher. A simple cotton t-shirt stamped with Chanel's double C logo replaced the typical silk blouse and updated the suit for the new brand-driven era of status dressing. Calvin Klein's 1990s aesthetic was reduced to its essentials, resulting in a composed and controlled sensuality. In contrast to the trend for logo mania, his clothing was simple, comfortable, and devoid of extraneous detail. This slip dress is made from smooth jersey that glides over the body, accentuating a lean silhouette that is reminiscent of the 1930s ideal. During the late 20th century, increased use of personal computers and the expansion of the internet transformed culture. Computer-aided design programs began to alter the ways garments were produced. Designers such as Jean-Paul Gaultier turned to cyberspace for aesthetic inspiration. Gautier's fall 1995 collection included colorful hooded jumpsuits made from stretch fabric, printed with a computer-generated design of dots that were sized to follow the shape of the body. The dots took on a cyber quality and could be interpreted as pixels. Isemiyaki launched his lower-cost Pleats Please collection in 1993, at a time when diffusion lines by high-fashion designers were proving successful. The polyester garments were sewn first, then permanently pleated using heat set technology. The image on this dress by artist and photographer Yasumasa Morimura was printed at approximately double its original size to ensure proper proportion once pleated. Digital technology continues to transform the design, fabrication, and promotion of fashion. The term grunge was first used to describe a music scene in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. The disheveled appearance of grunge musicians, characterized by worn flannel shirts and thrift store finds, quickly grew to influence high fashion. The grunge look inspired numerous fashion designers. Anna Sui's military-inspired garments, paired with rainbow-striped knits and accessorized with butterfly patches and custom Doc Martin boots, combined elements of the grunge aesthetic with Sui's optimistic sensibility. This trio of objects by Martin Margiela illustrates the process involved in constructing sweaters made from old army socks. The socks were cleverly cut, pinned, positioned, and sewn to correspond to the shape of the female body. The creation of one-of-a-kind garments from surplus or cast-off materials related to concerns over hyper-consumerism and the environment. The so-called it bag craze took off during the late 1990s. The baguette, 
named because it fits under the wearer's arm like a loaf of bread, was introduced by Silvia Venturini Fendi in 1997. Its impractically small size, high price tag, and prominently placed double F logo positioned the baguette as a coveted status item. Numerous established high fashion and couture houses were revived during the latter half of the 1990s. Their reinvigoration centered on the placement of young and rebellious talent, exemplified by the hiring of Alexander McQueen at the house of Givenchy, established in 1952. McQueen's aggressive and darkly romantic fashions polarized audiences. Nevertheless, he is widely considered to have created some of the most powerful and beautiful garments of his generation. His spectacular runway presentations helped to set the stage for increased interest in high fashion during the 21st century. Thanks for tuning in. If you would like to see more MFIT objects, our online collection is available here.